हेलो चिल्ड्रेन वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन एजु क्लास सेशन फॉर क्लास सिक्स चैप्टर नंबर सेवन गेटिंग टू नो प्लांट्स पार्ट टू वेन वी ऑब्जर्व द लीव क्लोजली वी फाइंड दैट द लीव हैव स्मॉल पोर्स दैट कनेक्ट द इन साइड ऑफ द लीव टू द आउटर सराउंडिंग्स दे परफॉर्म अ स्पेशल फंक्शन ऑफ एक्सचेंज ऑफ वाटर एंड गैसेज थ्रू दीज पोर्स सो द ट्रांसफर और एक्सचेंज ऑफ वाटर बिटवीन एटमोसफियर एंड द प्लांट and done by these leaves is known as transpiration it was first measured by stephen hales who was the first english botanist and physiologist who told that plants imbibe and perspire perspire means sweating and found that transpiration occurs from the leaves and that this process causes a continuous upward flow of water and dissolved nutrients from the roots this creates a type of upward pressure for movement of water and dissolved nutrients leaf stomata are the primary sites of transpiration and consist of two guard cells that perform the small uh, that form a small pore on the surface of the leaves the guard cells control the opening and closing of the stomata in response to various environmental stimuli and can regulate the rate of transpiration to reduce water loss darkness and internal water deficit tend to close stomata and decrease the tra- transpiration that means transpiration doesn't occur or at a very low rate it occurs in darkness as i told recently that gases and water exchange through stomata so for photosynthesis also the gases enter and exit through these stomata photosynthesis now let's understand what is it the process by which green plants and certain other organisms transform light energy into chemical energy light energy is actually captured and used to convert water carbon dioxide and minerals into oxygen and energy rich organic compounds if photosynthesis ceases there would be no food or other organic matter on earth most organisms would disappear and in a little space of time earth's atmosphere would become nearly void of any type of oxygen energy produced by photosynthesis is carried out by plants for millions and millions of years and it is responsible for the fossil fuel that is for giving energy to industrial society also photosynthesis is a light energized oxidation reduction process the overall reaction in which the carbohydrates are formed during plant photosynthesis can be indicated by the following equation 6 CO2 plus 6 H2O will give glucose and oxygen in presence of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll gives you glucose, oxygen, and again water is expelled out. This equation is merely a summary statement for the process of photosynthesis, which actually involves series of reactions in light and dark stages. comprising chemical reactions controlled by enzymes also right now roots roots one of the most important part they are the foundation of any plant they are the parts which is normally underground its primary functions are anchorage of the plant absorption of water and dissolved minerals and conduction of these to the stem and storage of reserve food also like in radish carrot etc right yeah the root differs from the stem mainly by lacking leaf scars and buds and has a root cap along with having branches originating from internal tissue rather than from the buds the primary root or radicle is the first organ to appear when a seed germinates it grows downward into the soil anchoring the seedlings okay now the roots are of two types in dicot plants the root is a tap root it grows downward and secondary roots grow laterally from it to form a tap root system in some plants 
such as carrots and turnips the tap root also serves to store the food okay it is the storage for food also grasses and other similar monocotyledons yeah, or, or you can better call call it monocots have a fibrous root system which is characterized by the mass of root of about equal diameters this network of roots does not arise as branches of primary root but consist of many branching roots that emerge from the base of the stem some roots called adventitious roots arise from an organ other than the root usually a stem sometimes leaf also like in bryophyllum they are especially numerous on underground stems such as rhizomes combs tubers and make it possible to vegetatively propagate many plants from stem or leaf cuttings now coming over to the most beautiful beautiful part of the plant that are flowers yes they are the best part of the plant i like them the best and i i'm sure that you all are also liking it yes so many varieties so many colors why why there is a question this is because they are supposed to be attractive they are supposed to be beautiful to attract the insects and tiny animals required for fertilization or reproduction in plants now question arises if the flower is not beautiful then they used to have some other adaptations for attraction of insects like their smell or sticky material or sweet sap something like that they need to be attractive they need to attract other animals or insects for spreading their pollen grains and involved in reproduction actually all the flowers have a uniform function uh, which is reproduction of the species through the production of seeds basically each flower consists of floral axis upon which are born the essential organs of reproduction and usually accessory organs essential organs are stamens and pistils and accessory organs are sepals and petals which help to attract the pollinating insects and protect the essential organs the floral axis is a greatly modified stem unlike vegetative stems which bears leaves it is usually contracted then and the parts of the flower are crowded together on the tip called the receptacle the flower parts are usually arranged in a holes like circles or in a form of round but may also be disposed spirally there may be so many different types of arrangements of flowers especially if the axis is elongated they are used to arrange uh, spirally there are commonly four distinct holes of flowers means the parts of the flowers like first is the outer calyx consisting of sepals second corolla consisting of petals third androecium a group of stamens and in the center is the gynoecium means the pistils the sepals and petals together make a group called perianth or the floral envelope okay which are accessory organs for reproductive parts of the plants the sepals are usually greenish and resemble reduced leaves whereas petals are colorful when sepals and petals are indistinguishable like in lilies and tulips they are called tepals what are they called tepals the androecium or male part comprise of stamens each of which consist of supporting filament and anther in which pollen is produced the gynoecium or female part of the flower comprises one or more pistils each of which consist of an ovary with an upright extension which is called style on the top is a stigma and mostly the stigma contains some type of sticky material which can attract and attach pollen 
pollen grains the ovary encloses the ovules or they are the future seeds in after pollination and uh, uh, formation of uh, the fruit ovules will turn into seeds and ovule will uh, ovary will form a fruit a pistil may be simple or uh, it may be compound it may be complex okay a flower having sepals petals stamens and pistils are called complete flowers and if lacking one or more of such structures it is said to be incomplete stamens and pistils are not present together in all the flowers okay when both are present in the same flower then it is said to be perfect or bisexual flowers a flower that lacks stamens or uh, is female while one which lacks pistil is male when the stamen plant bears unisexual flowers it is said to be monoecious like hibiscus begonia corn etc when male and female flowers are all together in a single flower means both type of male and female parts are available in a single flower or if you know, only single type of male or female flower is present in a plant then it is called dioecious like cotton weed uh, then dates etc there is a close relation between the type of root leaves and the seeds if plant has a tap root system it is most likely to have a reticulate venation and dicot seeds whereas if plant has a fibrous root then the plant is most likely to have monocot seeds and a parallel venation okay so dear children this is all about your chapter we learn a strong discipline from the plant so follow them and be disciplined like our mother nature by which she has maintained a complete equilibrium between among each and every organism see you in the next video till then take very good care of yourself and be disciplined and be regular in your studies thank you